Hello, I'm Runia, aka Media Adaptation, and welcome back to a moderation while we for a game. And you can say Murphy's Law has had it out for me. All this week we've had trouble with YouTube messing up, Google, and also our internet provider. So God knows when this video is actually going to get posted. Earlier this week we did a request for the adult horror anime Crimson Climax, which we'll throw a link up to up in the iCard, as well as in the Insulate. We also showed off our new models that are in the works. Again, another big thanks to Mr. Siasman for helping us make them. But anyway, let's get on to today's video. The supposedly lost 80s style anime, Go For A Punch, aka Saki Sanabashi. And I believe this would be our 24th video on the subject, where we recap the events of the past week of the Discord and Reddit groups, and then we work on compiling a list of anime from the time to help us cross-reference their findings, which has actually helped out a lot in the past weeks. But anyway, let us begin. And about the Discord, I've asked the person who's running it, and we've been given a link to it which we'll put down in the description below, in case you're interested in joining. Again, all trolls will be banned, please keep memes only on the boards that allow it, and please be respectful to the other members. But as for things that's happened there, this video did catch the eye of one of the members who wanted to know its origin, which we covered back in our second video, as it's from Gaku no Yori, Volume 2. Again, this series was one of the earliest suspects, as the cover art also seems to describe our girl. There's also an Indian subtitling group called Bach Endo, which was a suspect, since when researching the name Go For A Punch, they seemed to pop up a lot. But some of our members looked into their work, and they could be safely eliminated from the list. There are still several other ones out there that we're waiting to hear from, and as of editing this video, we also got in word that the group Elite fan sub is also clear from this list, after comparing their work and talking to the members. But sadly, the more we look into it, the more groups keep coming to light. So I'll keep you posted if we learn anything more. Also, the group Team Saki has put out their storyboard trailer for their recreation project. It's coming along nicely, and I'm unsure if there's any other place outside of the Discord where it can be viewed. But we'll show a few highlights. Again, it's still in its very early stages of work, so I'm unclear how often updates will be posted. And as for the Reddit front, strangely, it seems like they're starting to really pull themselves together. Over the past week, I think only one of the posts was actually a meme, as the others actually talked about possibilities. Nothing much has really panned out yet, but if you've been avoiding it a while because of the trolls, you might want to check back at it. But anyway, it's now time to cover our anime for this week. As we continue to grow our list, I want the time that we've already gone through. Man, I really need to actually make a physical list of all the ones that we've covered so far. People might actually want to have that information. But anyway, our first anime today is Call Me Tonight from 1986. Our main character runs a call girl business, and one night she receives a message from someone who claims that when he relieves himself, he turns into a monster. Thinking that it's some sort of metaphor or he's just being overly dramatic, she agrees to meet up with him, and then does some aggressive flirting, which makes his nose bleed, much to everyone's chagrin. But it keeps going, she then asks if he's okay, and then he transforms. But luckily it only lasts for a few moments. She flees with him and then ducks into a theater, asking what the hell is he and why did she get roped into all this? As for the first one, he really doesn't know. And as for the other, he has no one else he could actually talk to about it, so a random call girl at the very least would listen to him, and at the very worst, wouldn't affect anyone close to him. But then the B movie starts playing some fan service, which again causes him to change. So she learns that this happens anytime he gets excited, so she tries some exposure therapy, which constantly introduces him to stimulus to help him try and control it. Collateral damage, on the other hand, was apparently not part of her plan. Some people from the cafe try to sell this story to their boss, who isn't really buying it. 
but learns that the girl is from her high school, and uses the photo to blackmail her. She then tries to get jiggy with him to try and disprove things, but it only has the opposite effect as he now gets stuck in this mode. It also doesn't help that they plan to assault our girl as well. So they flee in terror. They then try to hit him with a rocket launcher, but his body mutates to deal with the threat. And then our girl appeals to his humanity, and he confronts this entity, which calls itself the Collection. A being that absorbs species from different planets to add to its power. The problem being that the higher intelligence of man has proven difficult to control, and can only assume control when it's driven by its base emotions, i.e. boobs. So the guy manages to reject it, and he's cured. All seems well enough, until it's implied that it simply jumped to a new host. Our next anime of today is called Kimura, from 1998. Okay, this one is a bit exposition heavy at the end, so in short, two guys return home from work, and stumble across a military group led by their father. And aside from some superpowered beings showing up, they also find a man in a jar. Which everyone in the dub keeps calling a girl. Which again, it's the 90s, so I feel like they're trying to pull another Sailor Moon BS. But we'll double back to that in a bit. Turns out that these are alien vampires. Well, technically actual vampires? <sighs> okay, all mythical beings existed and they fled to a different planet when mankind turned on them. They then took a human with them, and through her created a new generation, that were born the humanoid subspecies, a.e. vampires. We then flash back to our person in the tube, and it's clearly a girl. We then learn later that they can use body parts of other people to regenerate themselves, so the last person that she used pro was probably a guy. She is the last genetically viable person of their species, and was to become the mother of the next generation but she refused once she learned that that basically would turn her into Genova from Final Fantasy VII. And she would rather die. So our other vampire is trying to honor that wish, to spare her that fate. But our other demon wants to force her into that role, cause her offspring would then ravage the planet. Our human manages to distract the demon long enough for a vampire to kill him with his final shot, and he's left the choice to kill her to save the Earth, which she fires and the building collapses. But in our final scene, we see them driving off into the sunset, knowing that their offspring will potentially end all humanity. So to reiterate, you doomed all of mankind for a booty call. And our final anime of today is 1987's Hell's Target, which seems like a title that we've heard before, but I guess it's more of a testament to the generic conventions of that time. And just like last week, it's about a ship following the SOS of another one, and they come across a psionic alien life form that can manifest their fears, or whatever they hold dear to kill them. Here it's not as bad as last time, as this thing actually has a physical form, so you can fight against it. And we also get a nice range of different enemies, like demons, fallen soldiers, black dragons, vampires, valkyrie, uh, celestial beings. It is a nice cross section. Also, unlike last time, it's more science fiction and less science fantasy. And they ditch the whole solo monster thing, as it's more like a group of them on this planet. They try to navigate their way off the planet, but fail as they get trapped in a war scenario. And our last survivor nukes most of them, and puts up a message warning others not to come, before going into hypersleep. Only to wake up five years later, finding that the message has changed, as one of them pretended to be their dead crew member, and a new ship lands on the planet. And now it's time for a continued look at the adult anime section, as we're continuing the ones from 1985. And the first one on our list is called Fruits Vision, aka Traveling Fantasies, which deals with a high school girl getting groped on a train before someone steps in to save her, which then goes into the girl exploring her sexuality. Next up is Niketsu version episode 3. Ah, <sighs> Lolita anime. God damn it. Uh, another one of these twisted takes on Alice in Wonderland. And we're going to skip this one for obvious reasons. And our last one is called Lovely Series. And it involves standard high school drama. But this time, in space. So a future fantasy type thing. But then part two takes a complete different route and goes all Garden of Eden on us. Minus the whole getting kicked out of it. And which has become a tradition for us. We'll end our video on a selection of horror mangas from the site that we've been tasked to go over. 
and the first one on the list is called Cole, which has no clear release date, but is normally believed to have been between 1982 and 84. And it deals with the legend of the German doppelganger, the tale of seeing your identical twin, which is a sign that you'll die soon. A boy lives with his twin sister, who is always sick, so much so that he's not allowed to do anything that he enjoys doing, in fears that it would somehow upset her, which then he grows resentful of. After having the slingshot taken away, he goes to look for it, but the box collapses and he finds the wig. He flees from the scene of the crime, but the help mistakes him for his sister, and with that legend growing around, he decides to dress up as her, and then she dies of shock. After which, his life starts to turn around, and he's once again able to do the things that he enjoys. But on his way to play, he turns only to see his own doppelganger. Our next one is called What Was Lost, from 2000. Two girls are sitting at a table, as one of them spaces out, feeling that she's forgotten something. Her friend tells her that that's impossible, as this is the town where nothing is ever lost, as it always returns. She then tips her drink over on the ground, but it's back on the table as though nothing had changed. A few days later, she sees her friend who's now mad at her, saying that she never wants to see her again. Though the next day, it's as though nothing had changed. She asked her what she was so upset about, but she has no memory of it. So, thinking that she's trying to make fun of her, she starts to horseplay. She tries to get her off of her, but unintentionally pushes her down the stairs, as her friend's body lays motionless. She then begs her family to move, and then comes back a few years later, only to see a pair of girls sitting at a table. There's a static effect as the one the girls looks over to where she was standing, feeling that she has forgotten something, as her friend tells her that this is the town where nothing is ever lost, and it always returns. And our last one for the day is called, I Will Always Be With You, Okay? Or, I Am Always By Your Side. It actually goes by a lot of different titles. And this one does appear to be fairly recent, but I can't get it an exact release date, but it's either 2018 or 2019. I know that's outside of our normal search parameters, but I want to talk about it anyway. It involves an elementary student seeing a girl standing in the corner, but her face resembles that of a doll. She can't recall how long that girl has been there, but she feels like she has always been, even though that she's an only child. One day, she asked her if she wants to play, but she shakes her head and then avoids her. She asks her mom about her, but it turns out that no one else can see her. At school the next day, someone also asks about the quiet girl, but then points to a different part of the room, as though there were more than one of them. During the dance lesson, she sees her giggling as if talking to another unseen person, and then points to her as if showing which student that she belongs to. During recess, after her friend goes to the bathroom, she waves her over, as if wanting to show her something. She opens a gate that they're not supposed to go through, and takes her by the hand. She asks what it was that she wanted to show her, as the thing smiles, as they're now in the path of an oncoming truck. Her mom grieves for her, as we see another doll dressed in the same clothes standing behind her. And that about does it for this video. If you have any other ideas like seeing made to a video, then please post it down in the comments below. And we'll add it to our next viewer request week. It's now time for the part of the show where we ask you to help us appease the YouTube algorithm by dropping a like, share, or comment. It helps out much more than you'd think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then it's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to support this channel, then please visit our Patreon. Link will be down in the description below. Even if you can't give a lot, every little bit helps. Oh, we also started up a Let's Play channel. So if you want to see us try out some horror games, then feel free to stop on by. Link will be in the card as well as in the description. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Anyway, I'm Runya. And I'm Ada. Remind you to take life in moderation. Weep not for children, for life is this way.